Hello, I am Seamus Dunahoo of Eve University, and this is an introduction to wormholes. Now, during your early career in EVE Online, you're not likely to be interacting with wormholes very much. Uh, if we go to the star map, you'll mostly be in known space, and you can pull up a map of known space. This is a map of known space. It shows all the various solar systems in known space. You can get information on any one of these systems, and you can see the Stargate connections between them. For example, I am in the Amatins solar system as of the time of filming, and my adjacent solar systems are, at least the way I have this set up, the adjacent solar systems have their names put up. Apine, Buri, Arnatel, Junsorer, Jerlesel, Ice, and I can see the Stargates for those solar systems here on the overview. There is a category of solar systems that do not show up on the star map. And they're called wormhole space systems, also called unknown space systems, also called W space. And the only way you can get to W space is by these connections called wormholes. Now, these are cosmic signatures of the unknown type. Remember that the five types of cosmic signatures are unknown, gravimetric, magnetometric, lidar, and radar. And wormholes are of the unknown type. Now if you show in if you scan down a wormhole using probes, and you can use either core probes or combat probes, you can scan it down, get it to 100 percent and you can bookmark it from your scan results, or you can just warp to it. Or you can bookmark it and then warp to it, which is probably the best idea. And when you're on grid with the wormhole, you're actually looking at it on overview. Left click the wormhole, click the show info button, and it says an unstable wormhole deep in space. Wormholes of this kind usually collapse after a few days and can lead to anywhere. Now the next three sentences tell you things about the wormhole or where it leads to. This wormhole seems to lead into dangerous unknown parts of space. Now one thing to know about wormhole W space systems, they are arranged into six classes, for reasons that I'll get into later on in this episode. So classes one through six. If it just says unknown parts of space, that's class one, two, or three on the other side. If it says dangerous unknown, that's a class four or five. If it says deadly unknown, that's a class six. If it leads to some place in known space, that is, some place that has a stargate, then it'll say it seems to lead into null security space, or low security space, or high security space. The next two lines are particularly important. This first one says this wormhole has not yet begun its natural cycle of decay and should last at least another day. The next line is this wormhole has not yet had its stability significantly disrupted by ships passing through it. These wormholes are temporary. They will eventually collapse, either because too much mass has passed through them, or because of old age. Now, the fir now that third sentence that we saw should last at least another day. I think you can take that literally. So this is going to last at least another 24 hours. It's not going to die of old age within 24 hours. This wormhole has not yet had its stability significantly disrupted by ships passing through it. What that means is wormholes have a total amount of mass that they can tolerate over their lifetime. And if that much mass of ships passes through, the wormhole will collapse. If half that much, if less than half of that mass is passed through, it's going to give you this sentence. This wormhole has not yet had its stability significantly disrupted by ships passing through it. So whatever its original mass allocation was, at least half of that allocation is remaining. So it should still be good to pass some ships through it. Alright, so you always want to take a look at these sentences when you land on grid with a wormhole before you jump through, unless it's some sort of emergency situation where you're being chased, and if you don't jump through right now, you're going to die to the players who are chasing you. Alright, but the danger phrases are, at least on the mass, the danger phrase I believe is, this wormhole has been 
critically disrupted by the pattern by the mass of numerous ships passing through and is on the verge of collapse. That means very little of the mass allocation is remaining. So it could die because of one more ship passing through, maybe. Uh, the time critical sentence, I forget the exact wording on that, but it should sound similarly dire. Uh, this wormhole is reaching the end of its natural lifetime. I think that's what the phrase sentence is. So if you see either of those two danger sentences, you may not want to go through unless you're perfectly prepared to be in wormhole space for a while trying to scan your way back out. Now, this thing is a wormhole M555, and that actually has a meaning. So if we go to browser, where's my browser? Wiki, wiki, Dot .eveuniversity.org in the search field type wormhole push return uh, that's how to escape a wormhole living in wormhole space hold on where's the actual oh here we go wormholes all right so this is the article on wormholes and i'm going to jump down this is all a lot of useful information if you're going to play around with wormholes but i'm going to jump down to section 6 Wormhole, wormhole size, and stability information. And let me make this a little bit bigger. Now, worm, this is an M555, meaning that it leads to a class 5 wormhole space. It can tolerate up to 3 billion kilograms of ships passing through it, and of which no single ship may have more than 1 billion kilograms of mass. I like to think in terms of kilotons, that makes the numbers easier to comprehend. So this is a 3,000 kiloton wormhole. No ship passing through may be more massive than 1,000 kilotons. Okay. Frigates are typically 1 kiloton. Cruisers about 10 kilotons. Battleships are around 100 kilotons. Some freighters get close up to 8 or 900 kilotons. So you could pass a freighter through this wormhole. Carriers and dreadnoughts are over a thousand kilotons. There, I don't think they're going to fit. Let me double check that statement. Ships, capital ships. Let's see, freighters, Galente, obelisk. Yeah, an obelisk class Galente freighter is 940 kilotons. That'll go through without a problem. Carriers, Galente, Thanatos. 1163 kilotons. You're not getting a carrier in there. Dreadnoughts, Galente, Moros. 1292 kilotons. You're also you're not getting a dreadnought through there. All right, so 1000 kilotons per ship. So you're not getting ca carriers or dreadnoughts through, but you could move freighters through if you needed to. That said, freighters would be a very serious strain. A 900 kiloton freighter, this is only a 3,000 kiloton wormhole. I move a freighter in, it's just dropped to 2,100 kilotons remaining. That freighter comes back out, the wormhole drops to 1,200 kilotons remaining. The freighter jumps in, that's 300 kilotons remaining. The freighter can still jump out a second time even though there's only 300 kilotons remaining, but because it's a 900 kiloton ship, the moment that freighter jumps out and returns here, that wormhole's going to be reduced to below zero. It will collapse. All right? So, wormholes can die because too many ships moved through. Wormholes can die because of old age. All right? And... If you see the wormhole type code, you can try to look it up on the chart that I just showed you. If it says a wormhole K162, then that's a generic exit. And that has to deal with the way the game creates wormholes. At some point recently, the game decided to create this M555 right here in the Amaton solar system. I scanned it down and I warped to it. The moment I warped to this wormhole, the game actually created the K162 in some class 5 wormhole space system and established the connection. So the K162 means 
somebody else found it, and somebody else found it from the other side. So if you see a K162, then you don't really have any specific information about the wormhole, other than what you see in the show info. I am in a covert ops frigate, a Helios. I've got my covert ops cloaking device, too, that allows me to warp around while cloaked. I've got my probe launchers, micro warp drive, capacitor modules, and inertia nanofiber internal structures, and an overdrive injector system. Don't use inertia stabilizers, those increase your signature radius, and if other players are trying to catch you, the bigger your signature radius, the easier you are to catch. Oh, and I have small gravity capacitor upgrades to help with my probes. I'm gonna go in. Now, wormholes, you can jump through them if you are within five kilometers. Stargates are two and a half kilometers. So I'm going to decloak and jump. All right, I don't see any threats on the local grid. First thing I'm going to do, right click the wormhole, type in Amatons High Security. Wormhole, M555, uh, this is the inbound end, and I don't know the scan ID. Alright, directional scan, somebody lives here. Alright, let me push off from the wormhole. All right, let me take a look. All right, first thing you need to know about wormhole space. Oh, I already went a whole bunch of other first things, but anyway. Local, EVE systems, subspace communication beacon unreachable, channel list unavailable. And notice how local is empty. Not even I am showing up in it. That's because in wormhole space, local is in delayed mode. You don't show up in local, unless you open your mouth. The moment you start transmitting in local, your name appears in local channel, and you're visible to everybody who happened to be in local at the same time for the next 15 minutes. So by speaking in local, you are giving away your presence. People know you're in the system, they know who you are. That's not default information in a wormhole. In any solar system where you've got a stargate, local is in immediate mode. So just by being in the system, you show up in the local list. Everybody knows you're there. Everybody knows who you are. Wormhole space, that's not true. So keep your mouth shut. So I'm seeing a couple of control towers. So somebody lives here. I'll probably show you later what a control tower is. But anyway, wormhole systems have a name that looks like this, J140608. Right? It's also called the locust signature. So if anybody asks you for the locust signature, that's really just the name of the wormhole system. Now, you can get statistics from DotLan, and let me show you what I mean. So, eve maps, period, dot land, period, net, hit return, search, J140608, and let's search. And what we have here is a list, if I can get this to format correctly, here we are. What we have here is a list of statistics. It's Now, wormhole systems are also organized in constellations and regions. Why, I don't know. Maybe it's part of the underlying base structure of how solar systems are organized. Maybe the game can't understand systems that aren't in a constellation or region. So Dotland tells us that this solar system is in constellation C239 and region R24. Not that that is necessarily useful, 
but this is a class 5 wormhole system. Additionally, you may have noticed a message appear on your screen. Uh, local spatial phenomena may cause strange effects on your ship's systems. The most important thing about the Dotland report, though, is recent activity. Now, crowd control productions provides an interface for information called the API, and Dotland pulls the API information on all the solar systems that exist, and it can get that information every hour. So it can tell us how many jumps ha into and out of the system in the past 48 hours, how many NPC kills, ship kills, and pod kills. No players lost their ships or pods in the past two days. No NPCs were destroyed in this solar system in the past two days. But there have been a couple of jumps. So generally very quiet. I do see a couple of control towers on directional scanner. Uh, there's a lot of... You know what? Are there any force fields... No, there are no force fields. So the control towers that are here have to be abandoned. I'll tell you about uh, star bases later. Star bases, also known as PASs, player-owned star bases, POS. But the central structure of a star base is a control tower. I see two control towers here on directional scanner, uh, but I don't see any force fields, which means that the control towers are offline, which probably means that they've run out of fuel, which probably means they've been abandoned, which probably means they are not a threat. Probably. I'm going to want to check that out later. Anyway, uh, oh, I have drifted about 197 kilometers away from wormhole while I am talking, so I will go to people and places. I will add a bookmark here. Let's see. Call it Recon Wormhole Amatins. KM0216. That's about how many kilometers I am away from the wormhole. So besides bookmarking the wormhole itself, I am also making a reconnaissance bookmark 216 kilometers off the wormhole. All right. So in case of trouble, I'm going to warp to my reconnaissance bookmark, make sure there aren't any bubbles or smart bombers next to the wormhole, and then warp to the wormhole at zero. Now, keep in mind, you can't actually warp to the wormhole directly. Warped oh, you can. Huh. I guess CCP changed that. All right. So you can, if you are on grid the wormhole, you can warp to the wormhole at zero. Now, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make a safe spot. Take a look at the solar system map, and let's see. I need to create a safe spot, so. Let me make this window a little smaller. I will try to create a safe spot somewhere over there. So I'm going to right-click one of these moons. Somebody could be setting up an ambush for me at any of the warping points of the planets. Moons are much less likely to be ambush sites because you can't cover every single moon. The downside, however, is if you happen to warp to a moon with a starbase at it, then you're not likely to survive in anything other than a very small ship because only a small ship is going to warp right back out in time. But anyway, I'm going to warp to one of those moons at distance. Actually, I probably should not have warped to it at 100, but too late now. I'm going to create a bookmark, mid-warp, right now. Let's see, mid-warp wormhole. 
Now the wormhole is, normally I don't advise trying to use a mid-warp bookmark as a safe spot, but I'm going to try and keep this episode short. Uh, usually I would warp to one of these other celestial objects, one of these other planets or moons, and just create a real safe spot, say, in between here and here. But for now, that mid-warp wormhole bookmark will suffice. The wormhole appeared at a random location, and the residents, if there are any, uh, don't know which celestial that I warped to. If indeed there are any residents, which there might not be. Alright, so here I am. Let me scan, or let me do D-scan. I can do directional scan on the star map. Now I'm at this bookmark, or thereabouts. Let me center the solar system map on my bookmark, which is also near my current location, and let me try to find those control towers. Not there. No, not there either. Alright, that's two astros away. And it's not there. Not there either. How far away is that planet? Three astros, okay. Uh, not there. Alright, that's eight astros away. That's still in directional scanner range. Aha! Both control towers are near that planet. Okie dokie. Alright, you know what? Let me select one of these objects. I'm going to change my default warp distance. Let's say... 62 kilometers. Now my default... What, the way, what I did was I left-click a celestial object right-click the warp button, select set default warp to within distance, and I typed in 62,000 meters. I could right-click anything and just from the context menu select warp to within 0, 10, 20, 30, 50, 70, 100, but everybody else also has those same options. So I want to warp to that planet at a different distance. So I'm going to warp to planet J140608, planet 7, at a weird distance. That way, if anybody tries warp to warp active. from the wormhole behind me to that planet using a default distance like 50 or 70, they're not going to drop out of warp right on top of me, which is very important. Remember, if you're using a cloaking device, anything that gets within two kilometers of you will cause you to decloak. Anything. That is a, that plus sign looking thing is a customs office. Somebody used to do planetary interaction in here. Interesting. Alright, I've dropped out of warp. First things first, I want to start moving away from the planet's warp in point. Planets, moons, stars have arbitrary warping points. When you warp to a planet at zero, you're not really warping to the surface of the planet. Rather, you're warping to an arbitrary point chosen by CCP that's somewhere near the planet. And this is the horizon on the planet, so that it's kind of dark here. This is kind of a bad view of the planet. We're on the far side from the sun, I think. No, we're not. So why can't I see the surface on this thing? Never mind. Alright. Uh, okay, I'm already on my Everything tab. I have an Overview tab called Everything. And just to make sure that it is on Everything, I'm going to go to my Overview Settings, Filters tab, Type Sub tab, Select All. And resave this as Everything. Very occasionally, uh, CCP will add new categories to the uh, to the overview, like the incursion rats. 
So I want to make sure I really do have everything here. Now, I have a whole bunch of moons near me. The control towers that I saw earlier have to be anchored near the warping point of a moon. So, I'm going to sit this back to 360 degrees, and I'm going to drop this down to somewhere in the hundreds of thousands of kilometers. And Now, the two control towers are both closer than 483,000 kilometers, which limits the possibilities to moons 1 through 5. Let me try 200,000. I still see both control towers, which means that those two towers are at moons 1, 2, or 3. No, wait. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm failing at math. So they have to be at moons 1 and 2, then. You can only have one control tower per moon. The strange effects... This particular one is a Wolf Riot effect, class 5. The higher the class of the wormhole, the stronger the effects are. If this were a Wolf Riot effect in a class 1 wormhole space system, my signature radius wouldn't be quite so low, the bonus to small weapon damage wouldn't be quite so large, and the effects on resistances wouldn't, wouldn't be quite so strong. So armor resistances wouldn't be buffed quite as much, but shield resistances also wouldn't be nerfed quite as much. So the higher the class of the wormhole, the stronger the effects. Now, so what you see there in the background here is the wolf riot effect. It's part of the background, you can't actually warp to it, and it's always going to appear in the same direction. It's just part of the background image for this solar system. All right, first things first, where's moon one? There's moon one. Let me change my angle to five degrees. might have missed with my earlier attempt. Ah, yes, here we go. So there's the control, Amar control tower at moon one, and where is moon two? Why do I not normally have all my... Hold on. Alt-Shift-X. There we go. There are all my moon brackets. I was wondering where those went. All right, so now I can see all the moons as brackets on in space. So there is moon two over there, and there is the Kaldari control tower. All right, I want to get a closer look at these, but I don't want to warp to the moon from the planet. That's way too predictable. People set traps like that. So let me pick that moon over there. That's moon 16. I'm going to warp to that at my strange oh my distance. God. So here I am at moon 16. There's nothing here. Now I'm going to warp to moon 1 at my strange distance. Warp drive active. Actually, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Moon 1, let's see, 5100000. Zero, 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 zero. All right. Warp disruption batteries. Okay, I don't... S the thing I'm looking for here that I forgot to check... Mobile large warp disruptors, mobile small warp disruptors... Uh, those are basically bubbles that can uh, interfere with your warp and drag you to some place slightly off from where you intended to actually warp to. Those can be a very serious hazard, but I'll cover warp bubbles in a different episode. I don't see any mobile size warp disruptors on directional scanner, so I'm warping to moon one. And go to my default tab. And yeah, 
Yes. I didn't see any force fields earlier, which means that this control tower has run out of fuel. And now that I'm actually on grid with the control tower, I will right click on it, show info, and see who it belongs to. Alma uh, Spiritus Draconis. Oh, that's a that's a factional warfare corporation with 123 members. Hmm. I wonder if they just decided they wanted to walk away from this or something. Anyway, I'm going to right-click, bookmark this location, and I will call it CT dash, what, this is planet 7, moon 1, and that's the name of the control tower, and I will write down Spiritus Draconis Galente Militia. Corporation, click OK. Oh yeah, my people and places window is minimized, but still open, and because I have 15,000 bookmarks, while I have the window open, it takes me half of forever to get control back of my ship. All right, I'm going to warp to moon six, because I don't want to warp directly to moon number two from here. By the way, notice how on my default overview tab, I don't see a wormhole. The moment I warped away from the wormhole, it disappeared from overview. You can't warp to the wormhole again from overview once you're off grid. That's why I bookmark the wormhole. So if I want to return to that wormhole, I have to right click an empty space, go to my reconnaissance bookmark, which I made 200 kilometers off the wormhole, and then warp to that at zero. All right. That way I can check to see if there are any traps waiting for me. All right, that's why it's very important to bookmark the wormhole. All right, let me warp to moon number two. Warp drive active. I'm warping towards moon number two ahead of me. You may want to sometimes turn your camera around so that you've got a moon behind you that you're looking at. So just in case you run into trouble, you can warp right back out the same way you came in without bumping into anything. Uh, let's see, and there is the Kaldari control tower, and no force field. I didn't see a force field earlier, so obviously there's no bubble around this control tower. I'm going to right click, uh, hold on, left click, show info, and let me actually start moving again. I don't like sitting still. Uh, Trident RMBK. Hmm. So it's a different corporation. Interesting. So right click, bookmark location. It's a control tower, planet 7, moon 2, alpha. Click OK. So I now have bookmarks for the two control towers that I spotted. This is a pretty small solar system. So all of the planets are within directional scanner range of each other. By the way, directional maximum directional scanner range is 2,147,483,647 kilometers. Those of you who are programmers will recognize that as being one less than a power of two. Let me double check that using the Mac OS calculator. Two to the power of 31. So that's two to the 31st power minus one. But that also comes out to be, let's see. About 14.35 astronomical units. So your directional scanner has a maximum range of about 14 and a third astronomical units. This is a small solar system. If anything is uncloaked and at a planet or moon or the local star, I will see it on directional scan. Right. 
So much for the initial scouting parts. Uh, I now know that I'm safe. Let me now actually talk about why wormhole space is interesting. Let me right click, go back to my mid warp bookmark, warp drive and I will start launching core probes. Now, there is special kinds of loot that you can find in wormhole space, which involve killing what are called sleeper drones. The sleepers are automated drones of some long gone ancient civilization which might possibly have been a human civilization, we don't know. But the sleepers as a race are long gone. What are left behind are their drones. So you can fight sleeper drones, but in order to find them you need to scan down the cosmic anomalies and cosmic signatures. Uh, let me start off by putting out probes. By the way, whenever you're uncloaked, and probably during times when you are cloaked as well, you want to keep an eye on your uh, directional scanner. If you see combat probes out and the, you, they don't belong to anybody in your fleet, it's possible you're being hunted. I cloak, I hit the micro-warp at the same time, I double-click in a different direction so I'm turning, so anybody who saw me decloak thinks that I'm going in a completely different direction. Or they might realize that I might have changed directions and now have absolutely no idea where I am. Go to the map. Alright, so there are my probes. And just to start off with, before I actually get fancy with this, let me show everything and let me analyze. Now the cosmic anomalies will be detected at 100% if they are within range of your scan probes. By the way, your ship's onboard scanner, if you're not using probes, has a maximum range of 64 astros and only takes 10 seconds to scan. For those of you who are veterans returning to EVE Online after a while, yes, this is a recent change. Your onboard scanner on your ship, 64 astro range, 10 second scan. So no more having to warp to each planet one at a time and rerunning your scan because you've only got a 5 astro range. Now, uh, what I see here are the scan IDs, the fact that it's a cosmic anomaly, they're all in group unknown, which I think is true for all cosmic anomalies anywhere, and as well as the type. One of these is a core garrison, the others are Oru's Ozabing. Ozabniks. Oru's Ozabnik. Now, from this information, what I can do is I can go to the browser Eve Survival Period OR Eve Dash Survival Period ORG. I can go to the W Space Guide. I'm in a Class 5 system, I remember that, so I go to the Class 5 section of the guide. And here are the cosmic anomalies. And there's the core garrison, there's the Oru's Ozabink. Alright. So I can go to the guide for the Oru's Ozabnik, and it will give you information on the sleepers. They are omni tanked, deal omni damage. That's true everywhere, by the way. And it will tell you what to expect. The initial group when you warp in, you're gonna face four frigates and four battleships. A lot of them warp scramble. Some of them will stasis webify you, and some of them will uh, use energy vampires on you. So they'll drain your capacitor. Reinforcement wave one. Once you destroy the trigger, once you destroy all three sleepless sentinels, the next reinforcement wave appears. Six cruisers in a battleship. When you destroy the battleship, the second reinforcement wave appears. And once you've destroyed everything, you can salvage all the wreckage. And it's the loot and the wreckage on the sleepers that's valuable. Get that back out to known space and you can sell it on the open market. 
So if you can get the loot back to K-Space, you can sell it for quite a bit of ISK. Uh, some of it is called blue loot because the icons appear blue. Uh, in the market, it's under Browse, Neocom, Market, the Browse tab, Trade Goods, Sleeper Components, and these are what the icons look like. Ancient Coordinates Database, Neural Network Analyzers, Sleeper Data Libraries, Sleeper Drone AI Nexus. The NPCs have buy orders for these things. It's only until you can get this stuff to one of those uh, NPC buy orders that you'll actually get your ISK. The rest of it uh, can be sold on the open market to player industrialists who use the materials in question to manufacture Tech 3 strategic cruisers and their subsystems. Very expensive kinds of ships because the materials you need for them come from here in wormhole space. All right. So, that's the report of the initial group and the reinforcement waves. What are marked here as the capital escalation waves are the extra sleepers that will show up if for some reason you decide it's a good idea to warp in a capital ship, that is a carrier or a dreadnought. So if you try to bring a Thanatos into the fight, an extra six battleships are going to show up. Bring a second capital into the fight, another eight battleships are going to show up. Think very carefully before you bring in the capitals. That said, it can be quite worthwhile to do that if you're prepared for it. Let me actually show you what one of these sites looks like. Uh, let me close my star map. And let me right click one of these entries and warp to it at a hundred kilometers. Warp drive active which might possibly be a very horribly dangerous thing to do, I am not sure. I've got the customs office selected as an object that's roughly behind me in case this turns out to be a horrible mistake. And I need to get out very... Uh-oh, that is not... Warp drive active. Oh, for a moment, I thought it would be decloaked by something. All right, here you have a glimpse of sleepers, as well as part of the scenery. Ugh, for a moment, I thought I was going to get decloaked by the scenery. All right, so that's what a cosmic anomaly in wormhole space looks like. That's where you find the sleepers. Uh, in the case of radar and magnetometric sites, they're kind of similar to that, except that you also need somebody with an analyzer, a code breaker, and uh, you're going to have salvager modules anyway, because that's half the whole reason for coming here. But you all, for the radar sites, you need a code breaker. For the magnetometric sites, you need an analyzer module. All right. Now, let me go back to the solar system map and actually start scanning. Right, that's my 7 probe formation. This isn't a big solar system. I can start at 16 astros as the scan radius. And start scanning. Now, of the cosmic signatures that I detected, one of them is the wormhole that I used to get in here in the first place. So, let me see what I can find. So anomalies, radars, magnetometrics, those are generally the combat sites. Right. And in the case of radar and magnetometric, you want to bring an analyzer and a codebreaker. Not necessarily in that order. Codebreakers for the radars, analyzers for the magnetometrics. Right. But they have very serious sleeper resistance. Again, you want to check eve-survival.org for information on the sleepers. The gra there are grav sites, which are asteroid mining sites. Those just simply have the ordinary kinds of asteroids that you would find in known space. But with that said, if you live in a wormhole, you're going to need those asteroids because you're going to want to build things. 
Oh yes, you can build stuff in a wormhole, even without stations. Star bases do have modules for assembly arrays, so you can build stuff at a starbase if you wanted to, if you set up your starbase like that. You can even build carriers and dreadnoughts in wormhole space with the right kinds of modules. Not super carriers, not titans, because those require sovereignty. The starbase modules that you need to build or store super carriers or titans require sovereignty. Uh, they require a particular infrastructure hub upgrade, and you can only place an infrastructure hub someplace where you have sovereignty. Since the game prohibits you from claiming sovereignty in wormhole space, you can't have an infrastructure hub, you can't set up the starbase modules needed to build super capitals. So dreadnoughts and carriers are the biggest things that you can find here. I just found a LADAR site. So I'm going to warp to that within a hundred kilometers. My ship is cloaked, so you can't really... In this video, you really can't see the outline on my ship. I have the benefit that I'm actually looking at this live, so I'm not looking at it through a video, so I can see the outline of my ship vaguely. So I'm turning my camera, so I'm looking at my ship from behind. Uh, now from in front, let me pick a moon, just in case I need to warp out real quick. There's nothing here yet. Okay. Let me align to that moon. So I don't see anything here on directional scanner. Uh, but if I switch to my everything tab, you'll notice I have harvestable cloud, fullerite C320, harvestable cloud, fullerite C540. These are gas clouds. You need gas cloud harvesting modules in order to make use of these gas clouds. But you can mine the gas clouds with the gas cloud harvesters. That gives you material, like asteroids, that gives you material that can be refined into useful things, which are used to make Tech 3 strategic cruisers. Gas clouds in W space, you need those to make strategic cruisers. Gas clouds in K space, in known space, systems where you have stargates, those materials are used to make boosters, which are drugs that have effects on your player character. Drugs are... boosters are not within the scope of this episode. So gas clouds in wormhole space, you need those to make strategic cruisers. Uh, be forewarned, uh, when you initially warp to a LADAR site, you won't necessarily see anything right away, but 30 minutes after this first warp, sleepers will show up. So what you may want to do is have somebody warp to a LADAR site, then leave, and you'll come back with a combat squad 35 minutes later and destroy any sleepers that showed up. Then you can safely bring in your gas harvesting ships. Gas harvesting is also outside the scope of this episode. Let me go back to my mid-warp bookmark. Warp drive active. And let's see if I can find an example of a grav site. And whether I do or I don't, I am probably done here. Alright, that's a cosmic signature of type unknown, and I don't see my either of my bookmarks for the wormhole there. So I think this is a second wormhole. Unstable wormhole, TIV-791, let me right-click, warp to within 62 warp kilometers, and while I am doing that, spread out my probes, increase the radius, and see if I can find anything else. And let me close my star map, go back to my default tab. Alright, this is not the same wormhole. This is a wormhole Y790. Alright, let me start moving. 
So what I'm going to do... I really need to place bookmarks on my in-game browser. Wiki. Why am I doing this? Control tab. I have Google Chrome open. So, Y790, that leads to a class 1 wormhole space. It'll only take 20 kiloton ships or smaller, so only battle cruisers and smaller will go through. Battleships won't fit. And after 500 kilotons, it's going to collapse, and this leads to a class 1 wormhole space. And I very strongly suspect that this is the static exit. There can't be all that many wormholes in here. So, J unknown, class 1, wormhole, Y 790. No, Y790. Out. And this is TIV791. That's the scan ID. This is as much information as I know about the wormhole. It's a type Y790. Out meaning outbound. This is the entrance end. It spawned on this side. So it's possible nobody else found this wormhole before I did. And the scan ID is TIV-791, in case I need to tell another scout what to look for if he has to scan this thing and I can't give him or her the bookmark. And it leads to a class 1 system, but I don't know which one. And I forgot to mark it as being the suspected static. Static question mark. Oh, I didn't mention static exits, did I? You will never be trapped in wormhole space for lack of a wormhole. Alright? There will never be a situation where every single wormhole in a W space system has collapsed and you can't find a way out. If you've got probes, you can always find a way out. That way out might be camped by 200 players. Alright. But there will always be a way out. Alright. The way CCP enforces this guarantee is what players call the static exit. I think this is the static exit for this, sol for this solar system. So if enough ships pass through this wormhole to collapse it, or if it dies of old age, another wormhole Y790 will spawn somewhere else in the solar system and it will also lead to a class 1 wormhole, because Y790s always lead to a class 1 wormhole. When that Y790 collapses, another Y790 will spawn somewhere else in the solar system. This solar system will always spawn a Y790 if there isn't a Y790 present. That's the static exit, that's your guaranteed way out of this solar system. You will always be able to find a route back to known space somewhere. You might have to jump through wormhole and wormhole and wormhole and wormhole to get back to K-Space, but you will eventually find a way back to K-Space, assuming other players have not annihilated you along the way. By the way, notice there are no sleepers here. Wormholes are never camped by sleepers or any other kinds of NPCs. They are only camped by players. If there are any players that happen to be online at the time and bored enough to camp a wormhole. So, the wormhole itself is safe from NPCs. There are not going to be any NPCs here. NPCs won't show up at a wormhole unless you're at a wormhole in high security and somebody tried to shoot at you in high security space. Then in that case, the wormhole will be camped by Concord, but that's about it. Uh, what is this QEW019? Can I give you any other examples on things to find? There aren't all that many examples. There are only two cosmic signatures I haven't found yet, and one of those two has to be the way I originally came in, which I didn't bother to scan. I bookmarked it, which was very important, but I didn't bother to scan it to get its scan ID. Alright, QEW019 is another LADAR site. I've already shown you one of those. Process of elimination, LZG-365 
has to be the way I originally came in. And if I'm looking at where the probes think the wormhole is, if they three probes see it and they think it has to be here or here, and this is where the wormhole is actually located because I came in through that wormhole, so I know where it is. So you can see the deviation where between where the probes think it is and where it's actually located. All right. So there's nothing new to find here. All right, I've swept this solar system completely. I know every single cosmic anomaly and cosmic signature that's in this solar system. If I wanted to actually be a scout for a wormhole fleet, what I would do is I would set up a new note in my notepad, wormhole work, and I would put at the top of it J140608 so I don't accidentally confuse this with another wormhole in the future. And I will write down cosmic signatures and I will say LZG-365 is our exit. QEW-019 is a LADAR. CIX-018 is also a LADAR. And TIV-791 leads to a class 1 outbound. Alright. So I'll write those down. When my fleet mates come in, I will scan them using combat probes, and then I will write down the scan IDs of the fleet mates. Now that I know everything that's in this solar system, I can select everything and ignore result. Did, oh, oh, I already recovered my active probes. Uh, let me right click. Warp drive active. Yeah, let me get myself to my safe to my mid warp bookmark. Again, I would actually create another safe spot, probably while in warp right now, if I had my people in places open. I'm taking some chances here, uh, simply because I'm trying to keep this short. Uh, but if I were being my normal, usual, careful self, I would create a real safe spot in between three objects. You don't want to generally don't want to stop just at a mid-warp bookmark. Alright, so... Let me switch to my combat probes. I have to be decloaked for that. Now I'm keeping an eye on directional. seeing my own sister's combat scanner probes, which is reassuring because that means my overview and directional scan settings are working. Alright, hit micro warp, cloak, change direction, warp myself to my reconnaissance bookmark at zero. Warp drive active. I can close my notepad, and what I will do with my combat probes, I'll set up the formation. sets up the formation, and I will set this on a wide spread. Alright. And I will start scanning. Alright, so, there's the wormhole. I'm going to warp to it within 70 kilometers. Warp drive. Uh, I see a lot of structures. That's all of the various star-based structures that I spotted before. I don't need to see all of this. I'm going to create a new filter. I'm going to sh call it Ships and Signatures. Uh, deselect the Cosmic Anomalies. Right-click Cosmic Signature. Select All. Right-click Drone and Probe. Deselect. Right-click Ship. Select All. Right-click Structure. Deselect All and call that s and save that. Ships and Signatures. 
Now, I already ignored everything. All right, if I clear the ignored results, there are the four cosmic signatures I found earlier. I can sh left click one of them, shift left click another, ignore the result, and analyze. I'm here at the wormhole. I'm gonna use the look at command. I'm gonna right click my default orbit distance. I'm gonna change it to something large. I can make it 240,000 meters. It's more than warp range, but less than 400 kilometers. Beyond 350 kilometers, there's a risk you're going to drift off grid from the wormhole, and then you can't see what's going on. So I'm going to orbit this wormhole, and I'm going to keep scanning with the combat probes. The combat probes can see everything in the solar system because I set them up that way. It's a small solar system, so the scan radius is pretty big. It covers everything. I won't necessarily get a 100% result on anything new that shows up, but if something new does show up, like a new cosmic signature, because a new wormhole just opened up into the system from outside, or if a new ship uh, decloaks, I will spot it on the scan results. I'm ignoring the four cosmic signatures I already know about. Once my fleet mates are in system and I've had a chance to scan them once, I can write down their scan IDs and I can ignore them. Just the, the same way that I ignored the cosmic signatures, so if everything is normal, I should be seeing a blank list. The moment something new comes in, a new ship or a new sig cosmic signature, it shows up on this list. It'll show up on the list down here. And why I was trying to gesture at my computer screen with my finger in real life when you can't see me, I will never know. Alright, so the new result will show up here. And if I spot trouble coming, I can let the fleet know. I think I've gone on quite long enough. I'm going to recover my active probes and get out of here. Uh, oh, right. I'm too close to my recon bookmark to be able to warp to that right now, and I'm too close to the wormhole to be able to warp to that right now. Let me reset my camera. Check directional scan. Directional scan seems clear. Let me check my browser again. Eve maps period dot land period net J one four zero six zero nine. Try that again, J140. Oh, I'm sorry, 608. I got that wrong. No. There we go. That's the correct system. Alright, the data hasn't updated. I've probably been in here less than an hour, so it can't detect any new jump in. Oh, I'm at warp range. I'm getting out of here. Warp to within zero meters. Warp drive active. And I'm showing info on the wormhole. Not yet had its stability significantly disrupted. Beginning to decay and probably won't last another day. All right, the wormhole crossed the 24-hour mark while I was in here. I'm going to jump through. It's a wormhole K162. So this is the exit end. I won't know what type of wormhole it is unless I saw it on the other side. Of course I saw it on the other side. I am back in high security space. I am nice and safe. I am going to push off from the wormhole by orbiting it at extremely large distances. So that is wormholes. I've done enough talking. This is going to be a very long episode. I'm going to have to figure out how to pare it down. In the meantime, thank you for watching.